Yay! Good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is Swazi. I am on tour right now for BBC Bite Size. We're going up and down um, to different schools, teaching them or just giving them a peep into the world of the creative industries. And before I go any further, this right here is my best friend because today I opened this curtain and I just saw snow. So shouts out to the guys that actually went to school because I know there was a lot of schools um, that canceled because there's a lot of snow right now. But um, yeah, hot water bottle, boy. It's keeping me warm, it's saving me right now. Um, but today, it was a really good session. As always, um, the, the students were really engaged and loads of people asked some good questions. And today, I suppose the three main things that came out of our session um, was one, key skills that come out of GCSEs. Um, two, someone asked me, how do I get into radio? Um, what would you advise someone who wants to go into radio? It, actually, his question was more about um, being successful in the creative industries, um, whether that's a comedian, a radio presenter, but in particular, he asked me what makes you a good radio presenter, so I'll cover that. Um, and also, the topic of failure came up today, which I thought was brilliant. Um, and Olu, who was on the panel with us uh, this morning, he gave a really fantastic key quote, so I'll share that with you at the end. But yeah, key skills, GCSEs. Um, we had Alice on the panel today who is an who started off sorry as an apprentice and now she's over working at the BBC um, her hand in a, is in a lot of pies she is like a um, I can't remember what her title is I think it's production manager um, which means that she gets to be the glue really of a lot of departments a lot of jobs a lot of people and she's the person that makes things happen um, and so yeah she was saying it's a lot of admin it's a lot of booking things and calling people up but without her things just would not get done um, and her story was fantastic you know she said she tried out loads of different subjects she tried out a lot of different career options um, but she was at a party where she met a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend who she asked what do you do and they said I'm working with the BBC and that put in her head straight away oh right I didn't think about that and then she saw a post for the apprenticeship she went for it got through all the different layers of the apprenticeship and landed herself the job so yeah she's super cool super young really um you know right there with the kids as well so that was good fun olu he's brilliant he works in tech he is the person who quality controls bbc iplayer so every time you have a well, you shouldn't have a bad experience with BBC iPlayer because that's his job. He makes sure that your experience when you're watching it, the buffering isn't happening or, you know, all those things that just kind of just mess up watching it. Um, he's the man behind the tech and he makes all that happen. So, yeah, he's a, he was a really, really interesting to listen to today. And then Laura, who was also on the panel, is, um, yeah, into graphic design and designing the BBC website. Um, sorry, the BBC Bite Size website. So how amazing was it to be on the BBC Bite Size tour and have the person who is behind design? It was, it was a fantastic, fantastic panel today. And so some of the things that came up when talking about GCSEs, um, Ollie made a great point about maths. He said um, he wasn't a big fan of maths at school, and neither was I, to be honest. It took me a very, very long time to kind of get with the rhythm. And my poor mum was sending me to <laughs> sending me to every tuition school out there. And finally, I passed with an A. So hey, listen, if you work hard enough, you will get the grades. Um, and he was saying it's all about problem solving, which he uses in his everyday job, in his everyday, you know, day to day at work. And he said, you know, when you um, are sitting at that exam and you can see that box that says show your workings out, that's exactly what he does at work. He has to show his workings out, especially within the world of technology. Um, and problem solving is one of the key skills that he's found he's, he's been able to gain out of maths GCSE. Um, for me, I was talking about English. English was my my first love it still is my love and and my favorite subject um but the ability to communicate whether that be through written skills uh whether that be through conversation and presenting um or even reading you know without communication my job would just go under um whether it's about radio you have to be able to communicate you have to be able to get your idea from your head um sometimes onto paper before it comes out of your mouth and heard by an audience um, and so when you are studying English I said this yesterday but it's also a good skill to be able to reason to be able to have your own opinion and have your own judgment 
and then hear another opinion that then uh, forms part of your conclusion. Because in life, if you're only ranting about your own opinion and not taking in consideration of all the other opinions, um, you know, that key skill of being able to reason and being able to listen um, is further on. You know, it doesn't just stop at GCSE English. It is, it is a skill that anyone at any age is going to be using. Um, and so, yeah, and, and Alice was also saying about organisation skills as the glue in her job. She has got so many things on the go. She's constantly juggling. And so a practical tip she gave um, at school when she was at school was saying, you know, when I was your age, uh, and we were speaking to year nines and year tens today, when I was your age, I was doing extracurriculum activities, I was in a sports club, I was um, doing this, this and this, and I didn't know at the time that I was practising my skills around organisation. And it's so true, when you're at school, especially when you're doing GCSEs and you feel like you're studying about 100 subjects, you are organising yourself, whether that's your time, whether that's um, your school bag, whether that's your, you know, how you put things in order, you are developing skills on the go that you do not realise you're doing because it's under the banner of a particular subject. And so just, just making that point known to kids in the audience today, I think, well, as the host and I was in front of them, I just saw like light bulbs click thinking, oh, right, well, I better stick at this subject even if I don't like it because at the end of it I'm going to get key skills that is going to be useful for my career, going to be useful for the day after my exam when that subject is over and done with. Actually no, these key, skill, these key skills I'm picking up um, will be really good. So yeah, key skills from GCSEs I think was, was um, a number one sort of conversation that we had today. Um, number two, during the Q&A someone asked me, um, how do you get into radio or, or what tips would you give for a radio presenter? Um, and Alice, uh, Alice, it was so lovely to meet you today and um, you know, hear of all the things that's going on with the Bite Size team. And she kindly asked me to do my three top tips on uh, radio presenting and so, uh, you know, I'll share some now, but also just, just off the cuff, I've not prepped any of this. Um, but I think even just sitting with a vet today, who's, who I said yesterday is my, uh, my go-to, my line manager, with radio, you have to be very conscious of who you're talking to. That, since I've taken up the breakfast show on a Saturday morning, um, I'm very conscious of who's locked in. Who's locked in at six o'clock? Because the people who's listening at six o'clock won't necessarily be the same people who's listening at 10 o'clock in the evening. And so for me, you know, I jump in the cab in order to get to Kiss. And so I know my cab driver who I've just left has said to me, all right, cool, you're on at six, I'll be locked in, which then makes me think, yeah, like cab drivers will probably be my number one top pick of who has the radio on at six o'clock in the morning. So I'll usually shout out my cab driver because he's usually blasting Kiss and therefore it makes me sound as though I know who's listening, which I do know who's listening. And if you know who's listening to you, it makes your voice credible, it makes you believable. Um, your listeners trust you, I would hope. And so, yeah, I think having no radio experience whatsoever, I've learned uh, one of the top things about presenting on radio, especially because you can't see anyone, is being aware of who's going to be locked in. I know I've got a friend called Dave, Dave Ajakopi, um, and he's always in the gym at silly clock in the morning. And so usually I'll text him and be like, yeah, he's there, right, he's got Kiss on in the gym, I'm shouting you out. Um, and it's true, people go to the gym at six o'clock or whatever time it is. Um, and so, yeah, I said to that young guy, you know, think about who your audience is. And I think that's transferable to any sort of job in the creative industry, you know, you want to know, it's your target audience, isn't it? You want to know, right, this is the product or this is the service that I'm providing. Who's going to be on the other side of that? Um, who is it that I'm going to need to reach with this message? And therefore you will adapt how you communicate that. You will, um, yeah, you, you will switch up everything that you're doing in order to get your message across in the most effective way possible. Um, so yeah, that was one of the things. And also my GCSE in English. Oh my gosh, without that, and also my degree in creative writing. So I went to university, um, University of Roehampton, very nice university, and I studied creative writing. And I didn't know at the time the skills I was learning around story arc. 
So shouts to Leonie, shouts to James Smythe and everyone that was teaching me this. But good story arcs, we know, have a beginning, middle and end. And then in between them are things like, um, oh gosh, it's gone out of my head now, isn't it? But like goals, uh, what, does your, what, what, what goal does your character have? What do they want to achieve? But in essence, I just learned this arc that, you know, your character is one way at the beginning and then at the end, uh, they need to change. They need to have a... a a, an obvious change so that you as a viewer you as a consumer feel that's a justifiable ending right they're not the same way they started off they have gone through this journey and they've changed once they've got to the other side um, and writing to that story arc or writing with those key skills uh, really helps with my script work so when I'm at KISS I get in about four in the morning to prep my show and I'll go on Google and I'll, I'll, I'll look at the stories at the moment it's all about the Brit Awards okay great um who's going to be performing who's up for nominations who am I playing in the next three hours how can I make those links and then how can I script that how do I take all of that information and script it so that it fits within a 20 second gap because I've only got this amount of time from the end of one song to the beginning of the next and I need to get in bish bash bosh all of those facts and make it sound punchy, make it sound alive at six o'clock in the morning, seven in the morning, whatever time it may be. Um, and that's really difficult to do. And so going to uni, whether it was writing through the story arc or writing for the news, you know, a great tip that I learned when I was at uni is that if you're writing news stories, um, you need to get the five W's in within literally the first line. The who, what, where, when, and how, which is not a W, but you know what I mean. If you get those in, in the first sentence or two in your story, you have informed your reader or your audience of what the message is. Right, who's the story about? When did it happen? What happened? Why did it happen? Why did that person react like that? Where did this take place? How is this going to be resolved? How is this going to get from A to B? Those are the key questions that you need to answer within the first sentence or so. And once you've done that, that's when you can, you know, have fun with the creativity of it and, and explain the story, put your quotes in. Um, but yeah, my GCSE in English is probably, probably my most used GCSE that I'm, that I'm using at work within radio. Um, I say drama for presenting is probably my next one. Drama taught me a world of like, um, I think working with people, if anything, I think, <laughs> I remember doing my GCSE in drama. Shouts to my GCSE gang. Um, and there was a particular scene that we needed to nail. And you know when like you feel your grade is resting on the performance of someone else because you're in the same scene. And the person I was with just kind of wasn't putting the effort in. And I was going crazy thinking, well, we're tired at the hip for this performance because there's only two of us and it's kind of a double act. We both need to do well because, you know, we're tied into this. And I just remember thinking, okay, well, if the other person isn't gonna step up, that can't affect my performance, that can't affect me. And so that's been a transferable skill. When you do events, some people are passionate about the event, some people are not passionate about the event, but however passionate someone may be, that cannot affect your performance. And so if someone comes in on the night or on the day of the performance or the day of the, the event and they're not feeling it, listen, move to the side. Do you think your, your vibe is gonna knock mine? No, 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 no. I'm still gonna give it 110% as if I was being graded, as if I was being marked. Um, and that within that classroom, within those four walls of those dark black curtains in the drama studio, really honed in, no, I'm going for my GCSE. And it doesn't matter if anyone else is, is going to go for it or not. I'm going to do well. Obviously, I've got an A. I've got my A at the end of GCSE. But it was tough. It was really, really tough. It was not easy at all. Um, and so, yeah, I think... So to go back into how to get into radio, I didn't take the conventional route and BBC Bite Size, we're all about the creative industries this week and next week. And we are talking about how to get into the industry and everyone so far has had a different story, which is so encouraging. Because if you're sitting in that seat opposite us and you're a year nine, you're a year 10 and you're thinking, right, this is what I want to do. And this is where I, I, I need to get to. And this is currently where I am. How do I map out that journey? And to hear from the panelists 
say, yeah, I did it like this. Nope, I didn't do it like that. I did it like this. I think that would just encourage me to think, one, there's not one way of doing it, but two, what do then, what, what, what will my journey look like? That's exciting because then your journey and your story will contribute to the thousands and millions of stories of how people journey into the, into the creative industry. So how to get into radio, I won a competition. I entered a competition, um, the Kiss Chosen one in 2016, and I really went for it having no radio experience whatsoever. And my top 20 academy was a tough one, you know. It wasn't like I just sailed through. People had radio experience, people had um, connects, they, they had experience behind them, they had years and, 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 and a worthy experience behind them. And here's me, rocking up out of nowhere, Bossing a few jokes and and getting through to the top 20 and eventually getting through to the top five um, And now that I'm there, I would say kind of the top tips is yeah You want to sound credible you want to know about the artists that you're playing on the radio You want to make sure you are you are up to speed because all it takes is for someone to listen to you and think that's not right I know the answer to that and actually What you're talking about is not true. That's it. They've turned off purely because you just didn't get your facts right. That's so important, you wanna come across credible. Um, the other thing you wanna do is pitch yourself to radio stations where you like the music. Oh my gosh, the amount of conversations I have with people in radio, and some of them, they say, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do this because had I not, if I do not like the music that I'm playing, I can't do this all day. And there's other people who think, oh, I just hate this music and I turn the radio off and I'm just there at my job and I think, what is the point? Like, work at a radio station with the music you enjoy listening to because it makes your job so, so much easier, so much more enjoyable. So obviously I love all the music that's being played at Kiss. Um, I love presenting it, I love talking about it. And so the radio fits me. But for someone else in the audience today, maybe Kiss isn't their bag and maybe it's another radio station. Great, then that's where you kind of want to be then, isn't it? That's where you kind of want to pitch yourself. Um, and so yeah, again we had a few light bulb moments, and and that was really, that was really um, encouraging. Also because today was the first day someone asked me about me. Today was the first day I got a question about radio, and and I kind of forgot. Oh yeah, or I've got as much to offer in this, in this lineup, in this conversation as as all of the panelists because I've got a different job. And when someone asked that question to me, I felt really included there. And, and it was a great opportunity just to share about radio, knowing that when I was that age, I didn't have anyone to tell me about radio. I didn't have anyone to say, be credible, enjoy the music you love. Don't just apply to any radio station because if you get it, you may not enjoy it. Um, a lot of the time I'm scripting what I'm gonna say. Thankfully, actually, in the last four weeks, I've gone freestyle and I'm really relaxed. I'm really into it and I can, think off the top of my head and, and um, you know, put the fader up and off I go. But when I first started, it was a lot of script work. It was a lot of GCSE English. It was me sitting there, taking the whatever I'd researched and structuring it in a way that fits that 20 second, 30 second gap. And there's no shame in that. I know people in radio who still do that and they've been in there a lot longer than I have. Um, you know, in the creative industry, you want to provide an excellent service. You want to do that because you want to be known for your role. You want to be known for that industry. If that industry comes up, that's the people you want to say, yep, yeah, I know about radio because so-and-so does that. Or, you know, you want your name to kind of be synonymous with that industry. And so however you need to do that, do it. Why does it matter how you do that? Why is it bad if you can't do something as well as someone else? Because surely they're not going to be able to do something as well as you. We're different and we need to celebrate difference. That's, that's absolutely fine. Um, and so for me, getting into radio, yeah, I did a competition. But there's people who have gone to university and studied radio. There's people who um, have done it as work experience and gone that way or as an apprentice. There are so many different routes into the creative industry. Um, that there's no room to feel alienated. There's no excuse to feel, oh, it can't be me and I can't do it because time and time again, people share that that's not the case. Um, so yeah, I hope that's helpful about radio. And lastly, Olu's line. Olu today, he works in tech, yeah, he's the techie guy. And he said something that just 
will probably stick with me for a very, very long time. And I wish, I wish, I wish someone had told me this when I was at school. He said this, fail fast and fail often. Fail fast and fail often. That is such a good tagline. So fail fast. He was talking about when you're at work, my job is a lot to do with problem solving. We get given a problem or we come across a problem and our job um, in the tech department is to solve it. And so if it takes me one attempt or two attempts or three attempts or four, five, six, seven, eight, it doesn't matter. If that attempt doesn't work, you move on to the next, you move on to the next because eventually you're going to get to the solution. And I thought, what a brilliant way of looking at failing. Because so often we're told, oh, if you're a failure at something, that's it. You fail at the first hurdle. Don't even think about the second. Don't even attempt for the third, fourth, and fifth. But actually, it may, like Liv yesterday, it may take you that 15th attempt to find the solution. And if it's to do with problem solving, then hold on a minute. However you get to that solution, surely that's a good thing. <laughs> and I was like, wow, he, he just kind of unpacked failure in such a not unique but a very you know just understandable realistic way because who on earth would e ever be able to say no nope, never gonna taste failure that's setting yourself up to fail really ironically it's thinking well no we all have days where that did not go well we all have those days where we think, oh my gosh, I should have just not left my bed because <laughs> I'm just going through hurdle after hurdle. But he's like, no, the key is to fail fast, to get over that. And if that didn't work, all right, next one, next one, next one, next one, and fail often. The more you do that, the more you have a feel, I suppose, for what works. And therefore, you will hopefully reduce how much failure you experience because you'll have more, more solutions to hand. Um, and so, yeah, I think... As a rundown, that was a great tip as well about GCSEs, a lot of it within maths, um, and, and especially for me as problem solving, that is a transferable skill. That's a skill that you're gonna find you're using in whatever job because there will always be problems that need solutions. And so the skill of like algebra or Pythagoras or, um, you know, those things that you think, ah, oh, what do I ever do? Well, actually, there's probably key things in there that you have used to get to the answer that you are now using in your everyday life. We just don't call it Pythagoras. Um, and so that was quite mind blowing for not just the kids, but even for me to be reminded, yeah, it is about problem solving or organization skills or communication. Um, and that was, you know, if you're in school, there's so much pressure to get it right. There's so much pressure to think, the GCSEs I choose now are gonna determine the rest of my life. And to an extent, it will impact the next few years of your life, but it definitely won't set in stone your journey forever. Um, and just telling kids, you know what? Some of you will know what you wanna do and others of you won't. And both camps are fine. Some of you will have a gut instinct and some of you won't, that is fine. Some of you will do an option, take a career in it and then later down the line, change your mind. No matter where the change takes place, it's absolutely fine, it's absolutely fine. Um, and so yeah, that was kind of what today was all about. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else really. Oh yeah, today someone asked, quick question, what time? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. what comments? Had to, do you know what I've realised? I need glasses because when I watch the video back, I'm proper squinting. Let me open my eyes. Had to reconnect. Oh, people are connecting. Good, good, good. I want to know what key skills are you using in your everyday job that you were practising at GCSE level? Or what's been the number one GCSE that you use in your everyday life, in your everyday job? Maths, another one for maths, is budgeting. You know what's really... Um, Oh, quite frustrating actually with with some of the, the, the j j just the conversations that you can't really have is freelance a lot of kids don't understand what freelance is and you try and explain it as right you work for yourself but when growing up I didn't have no one tell me about self-employism is that even a thing but like I mean self-employism is that what you call it being self-employed self-employment there you go it's late allow me <laughs> but being self-employed, what? Like, I don't have to do a nine to five. 
I don't have to lock down one job for the entire month, week, year. I can do multiple jobs and earn money and um, do what I love and rest. And I didn't even know about that. And so when you are trying to explain the creative industries and people are saying, I do this, this and this, you can see on the kid's face, they're like, but how, Sway? How are you doing all of that? Because if you're at a nine to five, how is it possible? And it's so true. And so I wish I had a little bit more time to unpack what it means to be freelance because you know what it's like, panelists and, and set up time and introduction, you blink and your event is over. But yeah, I think in schools, we need to really hone in on what it means to be freelance, what it means to be self-employed, how you do your tax. Um, and of course, this is, this is probably a bit older for bite size, but when you get to being an adult and when you have to answer adult questions about tax you are a little bit lost and you just think well if I did some sort of business skills if I did a PSHE lesson that just told me how I work out tax yeah that may fall in line with maths and I'd love to learn that in maths but also that's a life skill that I'm going to need to use um and so yeah it is why am I sharing that I don't know but um, yeah, sorry, one question that got given to us today was, can I make a living off of YouTube? <laughs> and you know another thing that I think not just myself or teachers or people who um, are not of the, gen the YouTube generation, I'm saying as if I'm not of the YouTube generation, but um, YouTube is a career now. You know, young people are considering YouTube, considering a lot of online platforms as their go-to career. And to be honest with you, the truth is yes. Yes, you can make a living off of YouTube. Yes, you can create content and upload it and be sponsored and um, use all those skills and, and channel it into, into YouTube. Yes, the answer is yes, you can do that. Is it saturated? Yes, is also the answer. And so you will have to be very, very... Uh, clever with how you go about it but that question really reminded me we are in an age of technology these kids I mean our generation as well we live online we've got a very short attention span if you don't grab me within the first 15 seconds of an of a story pff, swipe scroll I'm on to the next um, and that kind of mentality is really um, changing up TV and how you know, someone, I had a TV meeting not too long ago and they said, right, if we put your show on, uh, what do you think about eight o'clock? Is eight o'clock good enough? And I said, eight o'clock? <laughs> I'm not even home by nine o'clock most days, if I'm honest. A lot of young people are working two, three, four, five jobs as freelancers. And so, um, yeah, just knowing that we are online now, uh, a lot of the time, it's great for young people because when talking about the creative industry, they've clocked. I've got a mobile phone. I've got, you know, the internet at the click of a button. I've got a video camera. I've got everything that I need to create what I need and a platform where that can sit on. That is so inspiring to tell a 12, 13, 14 year old, you can be in control of your own content. You can upload that. It's empowering really really empowering especially for kids who who you know love to talk love to express themselves and even for people who are not talkative and loud um it's just a great tool regardless for for people who who find themselves anywhere in the creative industry um okay I will let you go. It's coming up to half past, half an hour review of today's tour. Um, once again, Bite Size, thank you so much. Thank you so much for letting me be involved in the journey um, and for really going into schools and letting kids know the goodness that lies within the creative industry um, because so many light bulb moments have happened in this last week. Tomorrow is my last day of this week and then we've got one more week to go next week as well. Um, but I'm having a great time, a really, really good time. So yeah, um, lock in tomorrow evening. I will be home because tomorrow we finish around one o'clock or so. Um, and so yeah, nine o'clock tomorrow, I will be um, giving you the lowdown of what happens. But yeah, um, all things BBC Bite Size. Listen, things are changing, you know. Things are actually, actually changing and it's inspiring to be part of the change. Um, so yeah, until tomorrow, good night.